just yeah, feel, feel but, drained. But when you look at when you look at my vehicle, I'm at the peak of physical fitness for a man my age. So I think I'll just breeze through it. Away you go then on this this the day of all English weather days. What a nightmare today was. Yeah, well, it was uh, it was raining all day, twenty five degrees, and this is the first time I've been out of the house. When did you get your second shot? Well, I feel as if I've been shot twice, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, I uh, I received my second dose. When? Uh, yesterday. yesterday morning at noon. So it's the next day, seven o'clock. In the ass. What? Is it in the ass or it's in a the pain ass? In the ass, I'll tell you that. Did you, did you get shot in the ass? No, I got you. Yeah, you hear my little gist as a joke. Where? No, it's it's in my my arm, my Is left it? arm. Yeah, yeah. Is that it? arm was about twice the size last night when I went to bed. Is it the same arm as you had the first jab in? Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. it is the second jab worse than the first jab? Yeah, it's a thousand times worse. This is it not the same jab? Yeah, it is the same stuff. So why why? You've got two jabs, but they're both the same jab. Yeah, yeah, but I think the second time your body just reacts stronger to it. The first time it's just an invasion. The second time is a total takeover kind of feeling. But yeah, so the first time, which is four weeks apart with my Moderna, it felt more like like a like a muscle ache, like, like you've been working out too much yeah. on your arm. You just, it's just a bit painful, and that's it. Yeah. But this one, but again, everybody reacts differently. But last night, I could feel there was something wrong. You just feel different and hard yeah. to focus. And I was working. I had a lot of things planned and online stuff. And um, and my last my my last lesson ended at new at midnight mm. twelve. And then I had to finish the paperwork. Couldn't finish the paperwork. I just couldn't see straight. And my body was starting to ache and sweat. And then I was like, oh, well, this must be the beginning of these side effects. Yeah. And then went to sleep. Woke up every hour, just in sweats and. Strange pains. Did you have the fever dreams? Yeah, very strange dreams. Yeah, quite nice dreams. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, good, they're not stuff. fever dreams, then, are they? Oh, Saturday night fever. <laughs> <laughs> but it w- it w- it was nice. Uh, the are uh, good memories. Yeah, I dreamt about uh, my dad. Uh, I dreamt about uh, travel. And so here's the thing: the whole day I've been feeling really bad at the, the, the worst aches. It's like having a fluid. So your joints, yeah. uh, your back especially, hard to focus. And I still had minimum amount of work to do, but important stuff to do. I couldn't cancel some parts. Uh, and I was trying to focus. And they're on. it's online. Everything's yeah. online. So they, they don't see that you're not wearing any pants <laughs> and you've got your, f- your feet in some water <laughs> to <laughs> cool down. And, uh, yeah, so I had some medicine as well, which I didn't take. Yeah, the doctor gave me some medicine. I didn't didn't take to reduce the fever. So, have you cancelled some shit today? Yeah, I cancelled as much as I could, and by chance, about two hours of work was cancelled by the other parties. So it's been quite a comfortable day, but just yeah, going through the motion was really tough. But I tell you this thing, right? I felt really comfortable having those pains, and I'm not a masochist. Yeah, because it felt exactly like being on holiday. What do you mean? Well. My uh, oh hello, big that is that is that a side effect? <laughs> I need my breakfast. <laughs> uh, so, my favorite holidays are going on holiday, especially to uh, Indonesia or Philippines. Yeah, uh, scuba diving, very early in the morning, scuba diving, going to some shipwrecks, inside the wrecks, etc. Uh, back to the beach, do a very long hike mm. up a mountain or in the scorching sun, get really burnt to, to bits, uh, build up a bit of a fever that way. And then have a big dinner and then a huge, huge piss up <laughs> with the old Irishman. Yeah. Uh, and in the morning, you feel like today. I felt exactly yeah. like today. That, 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 that's so that's holiday. what it felt like. Yeah, so I felt quite comfortable. I thought, oh, this is nice. Uh, where's my, my huge mega breakfast, which <laughs> I have on those holidays? The five kilo uh, bacon and, and baked beans and stuff. And where's the uh, where's the, the scuba diver instructor who you got to avoid because he's, he's going to notice you're still drunk and they're not going to allow you on the and trip. Where's, and where's the 24 cans? Well, yeah, I, we used to wake up drunk before the hangover starts, and then you go scuba diving. That's, that's a big really no-no as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, there were some hairy moments going into a, a Second World War battleship, realizing I'm still drunk. Yeah, yeah, I've got to focus here. And uh, yeah, the Irishman's got some worse ones. 
memories of that. So, time, yeah. so the bread knife, did she have the first one and the second one the same time as you? Um, the old trouble and strife. Yeah. <laughs> the bread Solomon. knife, the wife, the trouble and strife. Her she, indoors. Uh, she had it much worse. Yeah, she was knocked out most of the day. And I'm just checking my phone a bit if she's messaging me to... to to do something for her. but no, I've been taking care of her most. most but days, she so. she keeps herself health healthy and fit, doesn't she? Yeah, but it's just luck of the draw. I, I was hearing about uh, the the Dutch football players who got it. Yeah, and some of them were fine, and some of them had a terrible time, and they're all as fit as as hell. You know, they work out and eat according to the diet. I'm just wondering how I'm going to go on, and I'm thinking maybe I, sh- I should. I I, I, do, I want to get it. I don't want to get it. I'm I, w- I can wake up in the morning and think, all right, I should get it, and then. By afternoon, I'm not going to bother. So, what are you going to do? I don't know. Seeing you, seeing you, <laughs> and the messages you sent me today, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, I did send you some, rough, but it was really rough this morning. Yeah, and that photograph that you sent me this morning, you were you were sweating, your face looked puffed up, <laughs> you looked red. I thought you'd been knocking one out. I thought, you, I thought, you, I thought you'd <laughs> sent me, when you sent me that photo. I thought you'd been uh, enjoying yourself. Enjoying oneself by oneself, bothering myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's um, bothering. And I'm thinking, I don't. Uh, if I don't want to end up looking like that. Yeah, I should have. Said, that was a 5 a.m. picture before my yeah. first online stuff. You know, the the sad thing about it is, I would. I'm on holiday, and I was up at that time. Oh, and I, 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 I sad did, about that. I'd, I I'd got a sweat on as well because <laughs> I were doing my stretching exercises, and I'd not put air con on before I went for my cycle. I looked at that. More or less immediately, as I'm doing my stretching, and I'm thinking, "God, you sad bastard! You're up at five o'clock looking at photos of Duncan, <laughs> looking like a a predator." Well, uh, yeah, I had uh, I had my hair combed back <laughs> and a red tie. I think. <laughs> yeah, that was my smiling face. I was trying to do this is broken. But with that, with that at your roughest. Yeah, that'd be the peak because I knew I had three of those back to back, three yeah. lessons back to back, and then I had a long break. So that that was nice. You go back to bed. Yeah, back to bed. Did you get any right sleep? Away. Yeah, but it, it's strange. You, it's it's like being knocked out. You you mm. just don't know where you are, and and when you come to, I think yeah. you don't wake up, just come to. And the missus must have slept today about ten hours. She she really was in in a coma almost. So I, yeah, it just it depends. It seems. Uh, I think I'm fit enough to get through it. I don't think it's got anything to do with it. Well, then why do these football players have a? Yeah, rough but time so for it? you might be you might be a, a, fit, a fit football player, but you know there's there's still big drinkers in the Premiership. There's people that don't oh, eat yeah. right in the Premiership, isn't there? Who? There's still all Who's that. Who's a big drinker in the Premiership these days? So nobody's going to admit to it now because they've all got publicists, aren't they? But some will have it a lot worse than others. Alkies. Yeah, think? yeah, definitely. Well, you in think the Premier League? Yeah. Take your national average of people who are alcoholics. It 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 goes on with the Premier League and all footballers. You think of the amount of people who you take a. So what what let's let's just go through this together. Twenty teams, eleven players in each team. That's well, two two hundred and twenty two players. Well, I'll say two fifty. Two fifty. So uh, what bench. percentage of those will be gay? Ten percent, eight percent. Right, and none of them. There's not been one single Premiership player that's come out while playing oh, really? in the Premiership, while no. playing while playing at the time. So you think how many alcoholics there are across the board? Well, you 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 got a choice of being an alcoholic. You don't have a choice of being gay. I don't know. I, th- I think it's like a disease, alcoholism. You, oh, you, I thought you were going to say gay. Because no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you, you, I think you're born with it, or you, you cultivate well, it in some, in some way. Well, yes, and I think you, you're, 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 you're prone to addiction. I think there is a gene that mm. that leads to gambling or overindulging, whether it's cocaine or yeah. booze or, or sex or you know anything that that just has a destructive way on. on I you. think I think I was like that for a while. Sex mad. Everything. <laughs> it, it, well, you're you know, in the army. I think d- drinks, tobacco, wine, women, or everything, and it were like a hundred percent. And well, then I sort of got an even keel to it. When was that the uh, the tourist board welcome to Bradford <laughs> well, <laughs> slogan? Yeah. But that, I d- and I don't know if it it ran in the family because well, it, it's possible. Yeah, it's a gene. But then, but but then, if you th- the family I grew up with were not the biologicals. But I'm just thinking: Have I been nurtured hmm. that way, or have I oh, been yeah. born with it Good that point. way? Because I don't know what the biologicals got up to. 
Yeah. Apart from underage sex and running out on your kids. <laughs> well, you liven up the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think that it's 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 both. It's it's circumstantial and it's in the genes. Yeah. Yeah. And how much percent that is? Yeah, that that's going to be different for everybody. But I don't know what 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 did what did you go at, at it? I mean, well, I never <laughs> smoked because I knew I would not be able to give it up. I, I, the booze, yeah, but I don't think I'm addicted to booze. But were you? I think it's work. Work. Yeah. I do like work. Yeah, I like keeping myself busy and doing stuff. I think me mine's the exercise. I've I've uh, replaced all the bad stuff that I used to be addicted to with stuff that's good for you now. I think that's. I, I'd say eating eating clean, but you just saw that piece of cake that I've eaten. But I did do a forty kilometer cycle and a kettlebell session today, so I deserve a bit of uh, junk going in. That sounds very gay. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of junk going in. Yeah. But yeah, to to get addicted, like I don't know, with with your were were your were your mother a big boozer? Were your dad a big boozer? No, Did, no, not were especially. He, no. Were he, were he, uh, were he a bother of with the women? No, no, no. He was one of those very shy characters uh, who might have wanted to, but never did. I mean, he was. Uh, my parents were the only married parents in my neighbourhood in Amsterdam. Yeah, it was all fashionable not to be married and have affairs and and break up and stuff. They were married. Yeah, I mean, I, when I was born, they were married. That all of my friends in Amsterdam, their parents never married. Did he do it for passport? Uh, no, that, that would have been in the EU, I think, by then, so that, that wasn't... They weren't the EU till 92, were they? No, 73. That was the ECC, wasn't it? Yeah, well, that ECC became the EU, became yeah. the... But it wasn't the EU-EU till 92, were it? Yeah, you're right, but they, 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 would, they would have gone easy on yeah. on white people in Europe. Uh, that's the way they were looking at it. No, you 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 had to be married in the UK. Yeah, well, this is the way. Otherwise, Whenever you will you were living of under of at brush, living oh they're living of at brush. What? They're not that that were the saying that were the over not not the idiom. Would it, would, it, would it be an idiom? If you if you were if you were living together and you weren't married, oh they're living of at brush. I don't know what it means. I have no idea what it means. They yeah, want so, mar- so, say again. They were living over the brush. Over the brush or under brush, something under like brush. that. Okay, yeah. It's a, I've never heard that. Maybe, maybe it's a, a Yorkshire saying, but I remember maybe early eight, late seventies, early eighties. My mother, go oh, that couple that have moved in up road, living over at Brush, and it, you knew immediately that they weren't married. And it, like my my mum and dad didn't live together until they were married, and that yep. was in sixty three. <laughs> 1963, the sixties, the swinging sixties, where everybody was sticking it in everybody else. But up north, you had to get yourself married before you could yeah, get yeah. some regular sex on the go. Yeah, but I think this is the this is the thing about when I used to go to England from Amsterdam. I used to go over to England to London and to Felixstowe, and a everyone was married. Yeah, and b they all had their own house with a massive right. mortgage. Yeah, but that that was just a, that that was the thing. Do you marry? Have you buy a house? Mm. Uh, mind you, not nice houses, but you 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 get your your your, your life on the road. And in Holland, it was the opposite. No one bought houses. These days, that's becoming the case. But yeah. back in the seventies, no one bought a house. I wouldn't know anybody who had a house in those days. I can I can remember thinking, why would somebody lock themselves in for twenty five years f- to something? I still think that. Um, and then when I and then I I fell into the trap. I bought an house in uh, ninety seven, and I remember. Getting the keys, walking in the living room and sitting down, not thinking, this is my house. I was thinking, what have I done? What the fuck have I done? I'm locked into this for 25 years. I can't do anything now. Mm. And then within three years, I'd rented it out and I was gone. Mm. And then I went back and sold it. Yeah, went back and sold it. And uh, I'm I'm been renting ever since. And I think renting suits us better. Well, it's a whole topic, isn't it? Renting these well, days. Well, we we can tomorrow. I can walk out of that house and go and move anywhere else, anywhere in the world. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I I've got this notion that banks kind of created this concept that you have to buy a house so they can make lots of cash. Out. It's a great product. Uh, you, yeah. you have to have a house. There's this <coughs> dream 
You know, you want to own your own house huh? and pressuring people into thinking that's the normal thing. It's, it's like diamonds, right? You've got to yeah. buy a diamond for, for, for the wedding. Who, who's, who created it? Yeah. What, who made that? And people get into that. That becomes a normal fact of reality. Well, well they're saying, oh, I'm buying this, f- for example, my house, 30, 32,000 pound in 97. Um, they say, right, you buy this house, uh, you pay it off, and then in 25 years, it's going to be worth loads, and then you sell it. So you're just thinking, oh, 32,000. But then when you work it out, you're not starting to pay that 32,000 off until about the 14th year of your mortgage, maybe 15th. Mm. So all that 15 years, you're just giving the bank money for, for giving you this loan. Mm. Um and then there's the repairs, the renovations, all this stuff. That So you're putting money into the house, and then obviously carpets need to be changed, curtains need to be changed. You've got to paint it. Oh, don't. So there's, so there's all that stuff yeah. to do. So by the time you've paid it off and you get to 25 years and get the deeds to your house, oh, well done. But what could you have done in that 25 yeah. years yeah. with that money? Yeah, I remember hearing uh, uh, Elon Musk the other day saying he, he sold all his properties. Got of it all, haven't uh, they? Yeah, got rid of it. Is now, he's in a different situation than we are, obviously, but the, the the concept is the same. There's no point in owning he's it. He's living in a in a tiny house on site in his factory. He's, oh, is he? he's rented out a place for his wife and kids um, and his ex-wife and kids. Um, but, yeah, because he's working all the time, he's just there on site hmm. in this little tiny house. Tiny house for tiny people. But I'm I'm all for this renting business. I would never advise my kids to buy a house. Yeah, it seems to be something that happened post-war. I think when people got this pressure. Of my grandparents never owned a house. They were always, re- well, obviously, with council housing, but they were always renting. Oh. Always renting. Yeah, it's a strange thing that happened in England. I remember thinking that when I got go, got over from Holland. Everyone ha- has a house. So the difference is that you had what, with the seeing it from both sides were. People were married and people bought their houses. Yeah, yeah. And what what system do you think were better? Uh, the Dutch system. <clears throat> Even with the marriage and stuff? Yeah, I mean, it, it seemed much more honest and, and people, you know, they they they, they have a, they, they, they realise they're not meant for each other, that they go their separate ways. But doesn't that fuck the kids up? My, uh, my parents divorced. Didn't do me any harm. <laughs> yeah, but you should... Well, the ki- the kids in the UK, all all my friends whose parents split up, you were usually a bit more fucked than the other ones that stayed together. <coughs> but then you get, excuse me, then you get those parents that stick together that shouldn't really stick together. Well, exactly. So yeah. w- w- what do you want? You want to have parents who constantly fight. Obviously, uh, parents should stay together as long as they can yeah. for kids, sure. But there's a limit. Uh, there's a w- where is that limit? Y- well, it just doesn't work anymore. Okay, that yeah. might be the limit. You shouldn't stay together for kids just because of the hell of it, and then ending up in screaming matches. My with grandma, violence, my grandma used to say that to me. I only stayed with him because of the kids. Uh. I said, "You've been married for sixty years, yeah, but I, I had to stay with him f- because of kids." Well, there's also like welfare. What do you do for money, and, and how we're going to stay there? There are other questions there, but in, in Holland, the, the system seemed to be quite developed. It wasn't mm. perfect, but in the seventies, eighties, my mum was taken care of by a local government to live alone, take care of three kids. Yeah, I mean, th- they were fighting hammer and nail at one point. I remember throwing plates and, and yeah. whacking each other. Yeah, yeah. Actually, not whacking each other. My my mum did most of the whacking. Yeah, there's a, there's, I don't, I, don't, I can't, there's, there's something great about being married to someone who's Japanese. I, I don't think, I can't recall me and my wife ever shouting and bawling at each other. Especially not in front of the kids. Mm. No, but I don't think we do. Because, we, yeah, if, you, if you're both on that... Right, this has got to be looked after, that's got to be looked after. Everything else is background noise. Whereas, I know with my mother worried about what other people thought. Well, that's another thing. W- worried about what other people think. D- is that is that what you noticed in the UK rather than Holland? Yeah, yeah. In Holland, it's much more based on well, what do you want to do, w- 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 what what you want to become, where you want to go. But in England, there seems to be much more neighbours looking up, l- looking at other curtain th- twitches, the toilet windows. Yeah. Uh, who who have to be offended by something? Yeah. Or have to see what's happening. Yeah, that that 
that's the weird thing. I, I'm a huge fan of the UK, but there are some bits where I think, okay, that, that sort of. It's not until you take a step a step out of it. I was all I I always grew up not worrying about what other people thought because my mother put that as a priority in her life, and I thought, well, fuck that. If you're worrying about what other people think, you're never going to get anything done. Yeah, yeah. If if other people's, op- I think some, I heard somebody say, when other people's opinions start to pay my rent, I'll start worrying about them. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Um, I heard that years ago, and I'm, 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 I'll use use that, and and the door. So I never used to, and then I, I started seeing somebody who put it as a priority, like my mother did, and I sort of changed into that person and it was fucking awful and now i'm back to the baseline where i don't really care well how would you approach that if someone would say that if a neighbor would suddenly say oh well uh, i I was on i was on pp island doing a cleanup and there were these other volunteers who were fucking assholes absolute assholes and i mentioned it to somebody at our table what's he doing jumping in front of BBC cameras or CNN cameras. And then this other fella turned to me and said, oh, you shouldn't really be saying that. We're all volunteering. And I went, all right. And then the person I was with, as we were walking to do the volunteering the next day, she made me feel so guilty about saying that. I wanted to leave that day. Mm-hmm. I wanted to leave. And then we went back the next night and the same fella were there and he were completely fine with me. But to be made to feel so guilty... Oh, well, I think the way that it was put to me, what I'd done, I thought, well, fucking hell, I can never go back there again. And I wanted to get on the boat and leave yeah. before I'd done any volunteering. And we stayed and had a great time. And then that sort of laid the seed. Well, oh, fuck, I don't give a fuck about other people's opinions. Well, it also comes with age. I think you're very sensitive when you're a young person. Eh? People worry, what, what do you dress? What, what sneakers do you have? What, mm. You don't you don't want to be outside of the group, eh? and, and and then you discover yourself, and and you you want to dress like an idiot or like a punk or something, and and that's great, and you develop your own character. But yeah, that that with about opinions and being outside of the group, and it's a very interesting power shift that no one will say anything until someone else says, "Well, actually, I don't agree with that." Any other? Yeah, me, me neither. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. What do you say? When you speak up before, that was a crucial moment. You see, I've n- I've never ever been part of a group. Ever in my life, have I ever been part of a group? Until You're in the army. Until well, no, I, until I had my own family. Because with my with my family, um, the extended family never accepted me. Um, and then I joined the army to be part of a group. And then I, when I were in there, I was thinking, no, this isn't me. I'm an individual. I'm not part of a group. So I got out, and then I ended up with fucking somebody I didn't shouldn't have been with. And then. When I got me, when I were on my own, single, that's when I loved it. Traveling on my own, fucking had the greatest time in Burma for a month, just traveling by myself. I loved it. And then when I got my own family, this is the first time I felt part of a group. Mm. And then you sort of think, ah, oh, this is what it's about. Your clan. Yeah, this <laughs> is what it's about. And I, I've never had that before. And it's a bit weird because now I'm part of a group. I'm thinking, well, there's three people there that um, I care about more than I care for myself. And if anybody wants to get to me, they can get to me through them. And that's what makes me worry now. Mm. It's a bit weird when you've not had that group mentality before. I'm still getting used to it, and it's been 10 years. It's weird. It's weird. I was mm. thinking about that today. Well, yeah, human relations, the... the, the uh, but the, 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 the stuff you were the stuff you were telling me about your family, you seem to be the outsider in the. Well, I was I was a man. I was a yeah, yeah, boy, yeah, yeah, in a lesbian situation. Yeah. yeah, but to be the outsider, that's probably put you in good stead now. Yeah, I think there's a th- there's a thing about being a black sheep. I'm the black sheep of the family, but what the rest of the people in the family don't understand is the black sheep, fucking has probably has the most fun. Even although everybody thinks you're a bit of a wanker, <laughs> you've got away from it all and you're having a great time out here somewhere while they're still there. Well, yeah, there's a lot to be said for that, but I, I'm not sure. I'm sure there's quite a few black sheep who end up 
Are you black sheep? Would Murdering. you say? Would you say in your family? Yeah, yeah, I'd say yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Is a black black so. sheep? But a black sheep is not always the knobhead, is it? No, no. But it, but it it is the the the, the outsider the content of extreme. It's it's the yeah. It's someone who's very into something, whether it's it's traveling or whether it's collecting something or whether it's yeah. it's, it's it's. But but then the negative side is is some psychopath who who uh, cuts up their family and wears yeah. them with hats. But when 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 kids describe the family unit, the dad is always the outsider because when when kids talk about the mother, oh yes, yeah, she's she's loving and she was always there and you know thing dinner was always made and you could go for advice and then and what about your dad and oh well dad's just dad yeah and that's all you that's all i want to aim for you know dad's Mm. just dad is there is is a presence we liked having him there but he's just a dad and you can say that to you can say that to a family in ireland syria australia oh dad's just dad and it means the same thing the world over doesn't it well, no, I wouldn't say so. I had a, my relationship with my dad was was more than that. He was yeah. almost my best friend. Yeah, and he wasn't a dad. He, he was really part of of everything that I did. Yeah, so that was that was different. I would say, yeah. But why? Yeah, that was that was different from other relationships, certainly. But I'm trying to be like that yeah. with my kids, yeah. because you know, I want to be part of that shit until it gets to a point where they say all right p- piss off leave me alone now i'm i'm, I'm You've good done your job yeah yeah mm. so I, I i don't if they if they go tits up with drugs or booze they're not going to be able to lay that at my door and they say oh you were never there bollocks they're not going to be able to lay that card at my door mm. you know what i mean yeah and and like like i said there's there's a lot of genes friends that come to our house now because their dads are not at home so they'll have a kick about with me and Jean and the mates outside because their dads are out at home and I tell you I am shit at football but if I can do four keepy ups his two mates are going oh <laughs> it's like being Pele <laughs> yeah. so, so yeah getting adored by some young Asian kids while you play football Maybe that's not the healthiest thing <laughs> for me to be doing. Did you see closing ceremony? Yeah, of course. I didn't watch it. I was rubbish. It was really bad. But the, everybody was saying it was better than opening ceremony. Well, yeah, but I mean, so much was cut and so much was was changed. And I saw a fellow with a saxophone who didn't look like he was playing it. Oh yeah, the Tokyo Sky Paradise. Yeah, I've got a picture downstairs here of them in Amsterdam twenty yeah. years ago. They're well, actually on the wall. Who are they? Tokyo Ska Paradise. They're one of the uh, ska, big band kind mm. of ska music. And they're quite popular in Japan. They're, most people know them. But they toured to Holland. No one knew them in Holland. They they did a they did a gig in the Milky Way. The Melkweg. The Milky Way? Uh, the Milky Way, yeah. The Melkweg. It's a very good place. I, I used it's to a work chocolate there. barn in England. Good. Milky Way. Oh. What is it, the Milky Way? What is it? You can't just say the Milky Way no, it, and a, expect it, everybody to know. It's, what what it's is it? A, it's a club. Yeah, you said club. Uh, they had they had two. Is it like the Acapulco Club in Halifax? No, it's a bit better than that. They had two uh, stages with two separate entrances. So, you, but they could cross over. There could be one massive event for one dance event or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, they came once uh, and did a did a gig, and the audience wasn't really into it. And and I remember there was a little fight in front of the stage. Yeah. Yeah, there was a couple of skinheads didn't think it would be like that. And they expected a ska band. <laughs> and the, the band looked in horror onto this little punch-up. in the front. But uh, they played on. And then uh, uh, my older sister, who was there as well, said, Oh, Duncan, you always want to go to Japan. I've, I've, I've got this Japanese man. And this she, because they were sort of uh, mingling around the audience yeah. after uh, boozing, <laughs> being a bit confused, because they couldn't speak a lick of English. And she got one of them by the neck. Said, Duncan, here's a Japanese man. <laughs> Speak to him. <laughs> and she was off her tits. She was just drunk. Yeah. And the bloke said, oh, hello, konnichiwa. And I said, oh, hello, konnichiwa. You know, I'm, I'm going to go to Japan. I'm yeah, curious. Yeah. And then she said, well, Duncan, is that all you're going to say? Because, you know, is that it? I said, well, I don't know this man. And then she just snogged the hell out of him. <laughs> Turned around and snogged the hell out of him. And I saw him again on TV at the closing <laughs> ceremony. It's the same fella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all the same. Uh, same. But the... 
the uh, them Olympics were a complete waste of time. And then you see the the Paris lot accepting it, and they're all in the streets flaving flags. These crowds and crowds of them under Eiffel Tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the opening. Uh, the closing ceremony was not as good as France's recorded bid. Yeah. <laughs> for, for how they're gonna. Well, do you remember? Do you remember when they passed it over from Rio to Tokyo, and it was like Abby had gone down the tube as Mario. Yeah, and then he sort great. of he sort of he, he, he were on Shibuya crossing, wasn't he? Yeah. And then he went down the pipe, and then he come back up in Rio and put the hat yeah. on. Yeah, it was good. He hated it apparently. Why? Oh, it just made him look like an idiot, which he is. No, but that that little bit did a huge yeah. good because everybody knows Mario in yeah, the world. Yeah, right? yeah. It's massive. But he apparently he didn't. He was forced to do it. He said later, I didn't want to do it at all. But they really strongly insisted I dressed up like Mario. But do you think the Queen wanted to jump out of a plane with 007? I don't think she actually <laughs> did it, but... No, but she was a sport for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you would, you, you'd do anything, wouldn't you, to promote your own country if you're Prime Minister? <clears throat> well, it's, it's part of the gig. I remember uh, Boris Johnson doing his bit for, for London. It, for Liverpool, when they were on that zip wire. Oh, was it Liverpool? Yeah, because what had happened was... I don't know, it might have been when that kid got shot, that young kid got shot by them Liverpool gangs. And he were taking the piss out of Liverpool with Boris Johnson. And he was saying uh, the condolence books, right? He said, well, I'm taking the piss out of Liverpool. And I went up there to to say sorry and to sign the book of condolence but Somebody had pinched it. <laughs> and that's Liverpool for you. That's Liverpool through and through. Well, I remember <laughs> him being stuck on that zip line. Because he had oh, the two excellent. Union Jacks, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, looked like a right twit. And he got stuck. Yeah, good for him. I mean, the man's the man's an absolute laughing stock. And he's Prime Minister now. Well, had been for, for over a year. But the... Under the Eiffel Tower, because all that stuff were going on with the, with the French going bananas that the Olympics were there, in, well, it's three years' time, isn't it? It's not four yeah, years, it's yeah. three years' time. Right. They couldn't do the messy unveiling under the Eiffel Tower. Oh, really? Yeah. Can you believe that week of events where Messi were at Barcelona, uh, you know, ready to go for next season, and now he's up at, in Paris? It was very quick. I'm reading about it, and it, as I was reading it, like the next report was coming in. Well, yeah, he's going over there, yeah. and then, what? I've just heard about it. But they were saying that Barcelona in that much shit, because in his press conference, he was saying he's crying and all that stuff. Um, And you, you think, well, they're in the shit because of you, because of your wages. And even if he'd played for free, they still wouldn't be able to meet the target. So all the, they'd, sort of, they'd signed four more players on big contracts, thinking that La Liga had got, oh, yeah, go on, you've got away with it again. And La Liga have gone, oh, you can piss off. Oh, wow, you yeah. can piss off. Because they always get away with it, the Real Madrid and Barcelona. They always get away with it. And uh, that's what this, is it Laporte or whoever's in charge? That's what they were banking on. Mm. And they've gone, oh, see you later. <clears throat> now, I have thought, there's only two clubs that can realistically afford him. Man City. Man City and PSG. Yeah. I think Guardiola knows that at 34, you're not bringing what you were bringing 10 years ago at the table. Well, you need one or two years out of him. Um, he's got Grealish as Pep now. I think if he went for... Would you go for Kane or the uh, bloke at Dortmund? Neither, eh? We'll just leave it as it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 <coughs> yeah. So with Messi going there, he's getting, I think he's getting 690,000 euros a week. And that Well, not he. I mean, his team. I don't know what he gets at no, the end of it. No, that's what he's getting a week. 690 a week. Yeah, but he's, he's got to pay quite a few staff yeah. members and but um, they, they've, they've got, I think they've got five free transfers. Messi, Donnarumma, Wijnaldum, um, and there's another two or three that I can't think of at the moment mm. that have gone there on freeze. <clears throat> yeah, there's been a couple. Now, my friend who lives in Paris, who, who I've lived with 
for a year and a half when I first moved to Japan, Fred, he's a PSG fan. Now you think, 12 years ago, PSG, PSG were uh, sailing close to the relegation zone. 12 years ago. And to Qatar. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm... I'm a couple of months older than PSG. <laughs> a couple of months older than PSG, and look where they are now. Now, what do you? What's your prediction with them for next season? Champions League winners? No. 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 PSG. No. Well, look at that front three: Mbappe, <coughs> Neymar, and yeah. Messi. Well, it, t- it takes a bit more than just three names. <coughs> no, I, I doubt they get get even to the finals. Don't you think? No, and even semis. No. They've never won it, ever. No, no, never won it. I think the only French team to have won it is Marseille. They won the... I think Marseille won it, yeah. Champions League or... I think, no, I think, the, I, think they won, man, I think they won Champions League. Yeah. I think. Let me check that. That's, must be a long time ago. I think the, they are the only French team to have won it. Let me just check. Uh, it'll, be, it'll, it'll be nice to see him play there just as an... Ob- ob- observing situation to see him live out there have Marseille won the Champions League have my said when the Champions League what sorry what were you saying well I'd I'd like to see him just play very well I'm not a big PSG fan in fact I'm not at all but I'd like to see him finish his career 1993 they won it oh well that's pretty close to Ajax before Ajax yeah but you see, he's he's gone to, he's gone to PSG, but he's going to be playing teams like Non Lille. and Lille and Brest, and you know they're not Monaco. If he'd have gone to the Premiership, you know you've got Man United, Chelsea, yeah. Liverpool. You've got some big hitters there, well, and he's, he's going to be testing himself every week. How he? I don't know how much input he had in his choice. I don't think he. I don't. He seems to be like the kind of guy who'll go with whatever's up, you know. But the two, the two teams, like, I mean, you're 34 year old, right? It's either Man City or PSG. Who would you go to? Oh, Man City, without a doubt. Did you think? Hell yeah. De Gea's oh, wife yeah. described Manchester as like living at the back of a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> If you're thinking about where you want to bring your kids up, I think you go with Paris. If you well, think I'm sure it, there's some elite schools up north there as well. But do you think he's do you think he's flying up there? And so you think he's still living in Barcelona and flying? Because it'll only be about an hour and a half flight, won't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Maybe go up for training Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, go oh, up for possibly. training. I mean, I'm sure there's a private jet available for that kind of. Especially for him. Nonce behavior. Have you seen his Have you seen his house in Barcelona? No, but I'm, I can only it's, assume it's it's round. It's round. It, it, it's not. It, it. I don't know if it's, you know, shaped it out like a football. But yeah, it's round. But why doesn't he give all his money to charity to the poor, help Africa? That's what I want to know. <laughs> well, when when you start getting that rich and earning six hundred ninety thousand euros a week. Every euro counts, doesn't it? You're not, <laughs> you're not going to give anything away. I remember uh, Dennis Burkamp back in the 90s. When, when he, went he went to Arsenal. He went to Arsenal and he was yeah. earning 65,000 guilders, which would be about 30,000 pound uh, euro. Right. So 25 grand. Yeah, roughly, yeah. In sterling. A week. In and that, ni- that was a huge shock. That was and, like, and, wow. And that were, that were 92, 93, wasn't it? Around yeah, roughly, there. Roughly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we we've moved on. I remember David Platt going to David Platt going to Barry, Barry. in uh, Italy, getting eight grand a week, and it was splashed over back pages. Eight thousand a week, like fucking hell, eight grand a week. Yeah. The League Two players are on that in England <laughs> now. Yeah, the yeah. dad da- um, da- because Derby County are having a job on f- uh, getting players in because they can only pay five grand a week thinking i know five grand a week is nothing but well yeah it is a bit i mean that's 20 grand a month yeah but for a foot i mean how much do you need 
I mean, you know, you in in, in England, five grand is going to take you two months to earn. Mm. A normal job, a normal to high paying job is going to take you two months to earn five thousand after tax. Five grand a week. I know you're only working if you're lucky till you're thirty five, but surely you can invest that so you sort it out in in the future. Mm. I don't know what they're on at Bradford, but I I, th- I think it's around four, because we're one of the higher payers in League Two, because we've got a bigger a bigger crowd coming in every week. We're regularly getting fourteen thousand in League Two. Yeah, good. Even these days, we've got a Premiership ground. Oh. Nice. It holds twenty five thousand for a League Two fucking stadium. It's unbelievable. One day, eh? One day. Back in the Premier League. But, you see, I don't think I could have done it. I don't think I could have had the drive to do it because I would have got too much into the booze and the women to another... Like Lee Sharp. I guess. Lee Sharp had the world at his feet at Manchester United. You know, before they started getting good, around 92, 93, Lee Sharp were at Manchester United and he just went full Manchester with the booze and the women and the ecstasy. And then Alex Ferguson just went off and he went to Leeds and then he ended up in Genoa and then he came back and played for Bradford mm. yeah came back and played for Bradford for fuck's sake you know you've gone tits up <laughs> when you're coming Lee back Lee Sharp I don't, I don't know that man I'll take a look later but yeah he, he were he were him and Ryan Giggs bought an house together and they were living together and it were known as the party house now the thing with Alex Ferguson is he wa- he wasn't just a football manager. He had his he had his spies out all around Manchester. You know, nightclub bouncers, restaurant owners, um, here, there, and everywhere. So they would call him directly, saying your players here, and or they would call him the next day and say, oh yeah, he did this, 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 and this. Mm. When Rio Ferdinand first went there, um. He, Rio Ferdinand were telling the story. He, he come into training and as he walking on the pitch, Alex Ferguson just said to him, um, "You need to stop enjoying yourself so much in Manchester. This is what pays. This is what puts food on your table." And Rio knew then that he needed to knuckle down, and oh. he turned into one of the best defenders in the world. Yeah, England. certainly, legends. Yeah. yeah. But he only end, he only ended up in Manchester because. Leeds had put everything on the Champions League. If you remember, they got to semi-finals one year, maybe ni- mid nineties, and they got knocked out by Deportivo La Coruña, oh, yeah. who yeah. are now in the lowest league in in Spain wow, at the moment. They dropped yeah. as well. Now they banked everything on the next season to get into Champions League. They didn't even get into the Champions League spots. Everything fell apart. Oh. They went down, they got relegated, they went to League One and they've been out in the wilderness for 18 years oh. and then they came back last season. Oh. Yeah. yeah, the mighty fall, eh? Yeah, but the the back now, which is I fucking hate Leeds because they're so close to Bradford. They're not even our rivals because we're crap, but people hate Leeds in West Yorkshire. Who would, who would be... A, I, has, has Amsterdam got two teams? No, no, just one. But Rotterdam's your rival, yeah? yeah? Yeah, yeah. And that's it? Well, I mean, PSV is another rival. Actually. Where's PSV? Eindhoven. Eindhoven, yeah. So, yeah. if you're looking... So, you've got Amsterdam, Rotterdam... Where's Eindhoven? It's sort of middle, middle of the country. Middle, so, it's not on coast? No, 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 middle. It's, it's between Amsterdam and Germany. Right. But, I mean, Bobby Robson went there he after, did, yeah, in, yeah. after yeah. Na- Italian 90, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And he had he had original Ronaldo there, didn't he? Oh wow! Yeah, was it him or Romario? No, he had original Ronaldo before he went off to Inter. Oh, you got a memory like an exercise. I've, I've got a memory about Dutch football that you don't know. I know. It's Can incredible. you not remember? You must remember having an original Ronaldo there. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But he was at PSV, wasn't he? Before he went to I've ch- before he went to Inter. Or Barcelona. Oh, I don't remember. I mean, I remember that uh, Romario was there at PSV. Yeah, yeah. Romario was the fella in '94 that were doing the baby yeah, thing, yeah, weren't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, that's early days. He uh, he kind of broke the mold, and then the others started coming in from Brazil into into Holland. Yeah, because because these 
African players and these South American players had to earn the keep in these leagues in France and Holland before they could get into Italy, Spain or England. Yeah, it was kind of building up the, the CV. Yeah. You couldn't go into these developed leagues until you'd done your stint in these lower well, leagues. Well, that's because the lower leagues didn't have the money to buy these big names, so they had to mm. research these younger kids in these other countries, South Africa to you name it, and uh, and get them over and, and cultivate them. And then it'd all be bought off by, yeah. by the bigger clubs all across Europe. Suarez started off at your lot, didn't he? That's right, yeah, Ajax. Ajax, yeah. yeah. And then Liverpool swooped in for him, and he was brilliant but at Liverpool. Ibrahimovic started off at Ajax. Yeah, well, they were Malmo first, weren't they? Yeah, but then very uh, there's a lot of footage on YouTube of a very young Ibrahimovic being his regular prick self. I love interviews. it. I love him, mate. Oh yeah, he's he's a, he's a he's a classic guy, but he's such an asshole to, to reporters. Uh, but yeah, he he came into uh, Ajax because he yeah. he was playing there the same time as that Egyptian Mido, wasn't he? Yes, that's right. Yeah, Mido yeah. was a good yeah. player because yeah. nobody really had heard of a we. Nobody had known a good Egyptian player until him. Yeah. And there's not been that many since until... Salah. Y- y- yeah, your Salah fella, who yeah. started in... Were he Andelect? I don't know where he started. I, I th- I oh, no, he, he, started in, he was in Switzerland, wasn't he? I don't know. He was in Switzerland somewhere. I'm sure, yeah. No, I don't think he went anywhere near Holland. But who's the kid at Andelect that we're going to go to Chelsea is that he's stayed at Andelect for another season? Because somebody w- somebody had a word with him and said don't go yet, so he stayed. Oh. And uh, Egyptian? No, he's an African bloke. I don't know where he's from though. But I think Drogba had a word with him. So oh, Luk- Lukule. Luk- Luk- it, it, it's, it, it's an L yeah, sounding, yeah, yeah. but yeah. Oh, amazing player, Belgium guy. Yeah. Is he Bel? Oh, yeah, I thought he plays for national team. Lukule, Lukule. Well, yeah. Uh, but somebody's worded him and said, look. You, your talent's not going anywhere. You you would be fifth... Ch- if you go to Chelsea, you're going to be fifth choice. Like Lukaku was. Lukaku was fifth choice at Chelsea. So he wasn't feeling the love. So he got farmed out to West Brom. And he was he were, he were a fucking big fish at West Brom. And he came back to Chelsea. Went to Everton. I think Everton bought him, didn't they? And then they sold him on to Liverpool. And then... No, Liverpool, Manchester United. And then he went to Inter he's had a couple of fantastic seasons at Inter he's lost a bit of weight he's become fantastic and then Chelsea have bought him back mm. so this, I think this, they sold him for 12 and they've just bought him for 97 <laughs> great bit of business uh, well when you've got Russian money like that great bit of business but do you know that um, Abramovich were flying over London to go and buy Tottenham, I think. What? Yeah. He was flying over... F- I'm sure it was Tottenham. Anyway, he's flying over London. They fly over Stamford Bridge and he sort of went, what, what's that? Because it was around July, August time. And he saw Stamford Bridge with the perfect pitch and the and the blue stadium. Oh, that's Chelsea. And he, he said, oh, t- turned the helicopter around and the, f- the flew right and he decided on Chelsea. Oh. And that's why they bought Chelsea. Wow. So it could have been Tottenham. That's could have been incredible. Tottenham. Because, but I think... I don't think that's true, though. That no, true. no, no, no. I think that Chelsea will be the... It'll be Chelsea-Man City this season. They'll be the people who are fighting it out, I think. It looks like the top two, yeah. I hope Liverpool come up well. You you're think... Uh, you're not a big fan, are they're you? A, well, they're a bit quiet, aren't they? The, the, I, don't, I, I don't know. Their transfers haven't been... Breaking news, mm. or not? I think it will. I think it'll be Manchester City, Chelsea, Liverpool. I think Leicester will be there or thereabouts. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Manchester United. I think it's Solskjaer's season, or he's out, or I think he's gone because they've they spent they've bought Sancho, aren't they? It's a huge from uh, Dortmund. Seventy yeah. seventy million. Is it? Seventy is twenty years old. So that's seven million straight in his back bin, just for signing. Right. So you get seven million. You get ten percent. So if the agent gets ten percent of that, so he's he's got six million three hundred thousand just for signing. Right. 
and then I don't know how much is on a week. Well, that's uh, the money game, man. That's why. But would you have gone to Manchester? I don't think I'd have gone to Manchester United. I wouldn't have even got to Manchester United for the money. I would prefer to pay play half price for a different team rather than pay f- play for Manchester United. I don't like seeing them do well for some reason. Yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> ooh, ooh, which team, any team around the world, do you hate for no reason whatsoever? I mean, with me, it's Manchester United. I just cannot, I don't, I don't know why I don't like them. Well, not because it's a rival. No, they're not a rival to me. No, I mean, I was going to say final, but that's because they're a rival. A team I don't like just for the hell of it. Um, I suppose Real Madrid. Yeah. yeah but the, but you, like you, you've, you've got a reason because they beat Ajax in the Champions League final. No, 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 that's nothing to do with it. Uh, no, I just I don't like the way that they 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 operate. It's like the, the big money. They just buy anything that they can and so they that, don't nurture any talent. It's that just, Galacticos. No, I, it's, it's always been the opposite with Barcelona. It's nurturing talent and, and yeah. slowly bringing things up. And that's why uh, Johan Cruyff had a long stint there and a lot of other Dutch players went there. I'm trying to think quickly which Dutchman went to Real Madrid. There's a lot of big exodus going there. It's always been Barcelona, yeah. even today. I see. I I always would look out for Barcelona. I, I think just because their kit was so recognisable, hmm. and the history about. I mean, it's got the Saint George's Cross on the emblem still to this day. You know, there's three parts of that L emblem. And you've got the St. George's Cross because it was started up by English expats. They wear those stripes and those colours because that was the public school colour. They've got the old English football in one of the top corners. And then you've got the yellow and red stripes because it's the Catalan flag. You know, look, it's just the history of it. And then with Real Madrid, everybody, everybody can play in white, can't they? I don't see, that's not the only reason for the white part, but it's just that they're... And it was Franco's structure. team. And anybody who wants to stop festivals and <laughs> keep everybody in their house, you can't be you can't be supporting them. Good old Franco. Yeah. Yeah, it would be yeah, it would be Manchester United. As, and especially when, when they won the first championship in ninety two, ninety three, there were a lot of people in Bradford that came out that were cheering and jumping up yeah, and down and that's, street. And that, yeah, well, why are you not from fucking Manchester? That's a bandwagon, mate. That always happens. You'll f- you'll say greetings from wherever Hartlepool. But Manchester City, Manchester City were all City. were always my second team, even before they got. But even when they were in League One, they would always be my second team. And that's just that fella sticking up for me at Pontins <laughs> when those people, when those kids started beating me up. So I'll always be with him. With that. <laughs> That's why they're my second team. All right, we've come to the bottom of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's been a. I, I, well, I can't remember the Latin phrase. You I'm look not, very lethargic. Yeah, I'm not quite my. I'm not the man I used to be. I think this <laughs> sentence. There's a beautiful Latin phrase. Not that you know that. Go on then. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know what it. I can't remember what it was. But uh, this. Eventually, you're going to get this. I'm assuming, yeah. otherwise you can't travel. So I'm assuming you are going to get this. I'm going to have to get it. Yeah. So whether you like it or lump it, you're going to get it. And then you'll see how weird it feels like you've done too much exercise and been in the sun too long. You just yeah, feel but, drained. But when you, look at, when you look at my vehicle, I'm at the peak of physical fitness for a man my age. So I think I'll just breeze through it. <laughs> which, ev- this, which which scientific doctor? We've got these. We've got these scales at home, right? We've got these scales at home, and they've got four metallic pads, and it reads everything through your feet. So it sends it sends these things up into your body. It sends these uh, ray not rays vibrations up into your body. Word? So it, so it reads everything in your body: your fat content, your muscle content, um, how much sugar you've got in your blood, your this, that, and other, BMI. And then it comes back and it tells you your physical age as well. Now, as a 50-year-old man, it's come up at 43 years old for me. this one. So I'm very chuffed about that. Now, because my wife doesn't take as much care of herself as she should do, she's pegged as a 42-year-old, right? So we're, we're of similar age. How old is she? 39. Oh. Yeah. We are of a similar age physically, so yeah, I'm just going with that. 
So I'll, I'll bring him round. I'll bring him round next time and get on him and see what the see Bertrand what. Bertrand Russell said: "Believe things not because you want to believe them, based on scientific evidence, not because you hope." Well, this real. is scientific evidence. These scales are scientific. And, and the fact that you won't get sick from a jab. I don't think I will. I, well, well, look at me. I'm a I'm a specimen, aren't I? I I'm a fi- for fifty years old. I am a specimen of yeah, what, so peak why, why physical fitness. Why can you fitness. not get sick from this jab? Based on what? Um, the vitamins I take, the exercise I take. There's no, there's no scientific evidence that there's a link between these two things. People are getting sick, who, as I said, who are, who are football players, who are at the peak of their physical being. Fish oil, zinc, um, iron. I take these every morning. Have you Vitamin D. Oh, so you've researched this then? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I drink, I drink three liters of water a day. I eat clean. Um, I, I cycle at least 25 kilometers a day and I do a half an hour kettlebell session. If I've got time, I will go out kayaking in the summer. So I am at my peak. Can you, well, are you not able to get cancer? I don't smoke. But there are other types of cancer than lung cancer. Well, now you've said it, I'm going to get cancer now, aren't I? <laughs> now you've said you're, it. You're basic, I think, the fact that you're healthy, that you, you won't be affected by some... Thing, but that's that's the thing. No, but look, look, at, I'm I am a virile man. My hair ain't falling out. It's going a bit white, but I'm I'm not. It's not falling out. You, I've got no hemorrhoids. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. No farmer Giles. No. So I I just keep myself chugging along. I used to enter this uh this teacher's lounge at the ministry. Uh, and there was one English bloke and all American blokes. Yeah. They'd come and say, "All right, Mick, how's your Farmer Giles?" <laughs> and all did the Americans he, like, oh, what's, what's Farmer Did he know what he was talking? Did you know what he was talking about? Yeah, he knew. He was laughing. But the Yanks, the, the, what far, is he a farmer? What's, what's going on? Well, have you have you have you suffered from him, Farmer Giles? Yeah, uh, I have in the past. You yeah. push it back in, or do you just play? Give it a play bit of a tickle. It? No, you just bear it. You, you get some medicine, some ointment, and but you sip it out. I had one right. It didn't hurt, but it was just there on the left side of my ass, and I just shoved it back in, Ooh. and it stayed up there. <laughs> but I don't push as hard now. I, I wait until I need to go rather than I want to go. Um, so every time I have to go, it's a it's touch and go. It's like right, I've got to go. Not I'll go and sit down and see what happens. Well, thanks for sharing this. No Delightful problem. information. No problem. Shall, shall we shall we sign off there? Uh? Yeah, on that bombshell. <laughs> on that bombshell. We're talking about when you go to the toilet. Right. I'll see you later because that's an hour. Bonjour. <laughs>